And one of the, the areas of opportunity, let's call it like that. One of the areas of opportunity in an in a intermediate speaker is that we need to find more synonyms per words that we dominate. In this moment, we have a list of words in our brain. We have a catalog of words in our brain that work very well for communication. In this moment, you have no problems on communication. But if you have problems understanding, it's probably because we need more vocabulary in our brains. And we need more vocabulary that is less similar to Spanish. In this moment, this is when you are going to say bye bye to the comfort of our mother language. And we will go directly to real, 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 real English. Phrasal verbs are real English. Okay? That's going to be the mission. Why are phrasal verbs real English? There is a little bit of etymology happening here. Etymology expresses the history of words, okay? And the history of words tells that Spanish comes from Latin roots and English comes from Germanic roots. So they are very parallel and they have never crossed paths, never. They crossed a little bit of episodes, for, for example, when, when the Catholic Church started uh, making Catholicism into, into England before the domination of America. No? And this is a little bit of a crossover, right? When the languages started to mix. Also, for education. When universities existed, when universities started, the languages started to cross, with Spanish and English. And, well, Latin and Germanic. No, no Spanish and English. But with history, we can see that words that are not similar to Spanish are more common in English. Take a note about that. Take a mental note. Words that are less similar to Spanish, let's write that, let's take a mental note, Words that are less similar to Spanish are more common in English. I want you to take this as your motivation to learn new phrasal verbs. A good example for this is the word, for example, you have the word observe. No? Is this similar to Spanish, yes or no? Yes. Right? The word exists and then we go through the dictionary and we will see that the word is considered formal how crazy is that no why is it formal well English words that are similar to Spanish 
are considered formal because they have a connection with a, um, what's the name of this? Edu education? No. Um, academic. It has a, a connection with academic speech. Why? Because the academy is from Greece, the academy is from Italy, the academy is from the old, from the old uh, Greece, ancient Greece, had Latin and Greek as a primary language. So when they cross over with the Germanic languages, they needed to adapt this language and make a combination. Do you understand what I'm saying about this? Yeah. Yes. Right? Mini lesson of history? Right. No, right. <laughs> thank you. Right. So that's precisely the point. The words that are similar to Spanish are considered formal because of etymology. How do you say observe in English then? In a normal way? Well, the word look at. This is not similar to Spanish. Do you agree? How different it is to say, look at this, than if you say, observe this. Do you agree with me? Any question at this moment? Any doubt? Not the chair. Right? So I am telling you this because I want you to create a little bit of motivation on understanding and learning new phrasal verbs. The more phrasal verbs you have in your brain, phrasal verbs and collocations, the more advanced your English is. That's very important to have in mind. You need to learn a lot of phrasal verbs. But of course, the worst methodology is a list. Don't find a list. That's the most boring and bad way to learn phrasal verbs. The best way to learn phrasal verbs is listening constantly, constantly, constantly to American people speaking. The same tip that I have given you since the beginning. That's the introduction to phrasal verbs. Okay? So let's talk about let's talk about how they are used. Well, let's check some examples first. Common phrasal verbs. I have the word hang up, I have the word break down, and I have the word take off as little examples. Okay? We are going to examine some examples and we are going to take check the synonym. Okay? Every time you learn a new phrasal verb, a good way to learn them is by finding the easy synonym that can match the phrasal verb. Hang up. Who knows or who has heard hang up before? What? Who has heard the word hang up before? Nobody? Nobody knows what is hang up? Similar to go out? Go out. In what? Where have you heard? Uh, with with friends. Okay. Ah, uh, you are confusing it with hang out. Oh yes. That's it. It's um, like when someone calls you. When someone calls you. When someone calls you and you receive the call. <laughs> Close. It's not to receive the call. It's yeah, after you receive the call. Finalize, finalize the call. Excellent. Isaac is right. 
repeat it, Isaac, because your microphone had problems. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, I think that, as Silvana mentioned, is when you are in a call and you want to, to finalize it. To finalize it? I have to finalize your call. Yeah. Then you are you are talking and then you beep, and hang up. Okay. Yeah. And you end the call. You are pretty much right. Hang up is to end a phone conversation by putting down the phone receiver or pressing the end, uh, end call button. You see? Which is very, very interesting is it phrasal verbs can be confusing for the person who focuses on the first word. If you focus only on the first word, that's never going to work. The best way to, to find it is by checking it in an example. After I hung up, I remembered what I did, what I wanted to say. I'm going to show you a strategy to learn phrasal verbs. You are going to read the definition very carefully, and then you are going to find a simple synonym that can substitute or can replace the phrasal verb. For example, According to the definition, hang up is to end a phone conversation. That's the most relevant, uh, the most relevant synonym. So in this example, after I hung up, I can replace the word hung up with this phrase. What is the result? Tell me, Isaac. I'm sorry, who? I, I yeah. have internet problems. Okay. Uh, could you repeat the, the question? I'm having some troubles with my internet. Okay, one more time. When we are talking about phrasal verbs, mm -hmm. a good strategy to learn phrasal verbs is read the definition in the dictionary mm -hmm. and find the most important or relevant uh, synonym, like the portion of information that is the synonym to the sentence, to the word okay. hang, hang up in this case. What section is the best replacing phrase? Um, I think that is putting down the phone. Putting down the phone. That's not in the definition. Um, yes, it is. No, <laughs> but ah, I here. Think, Sorry, putting down yeah. the phone. Because I think that hang up is after you end. So you end the call and then you put down the the phone, no? So I think that is the, no? Or is Joseph? <laughs> no, because what if it's a, what if it's a cell phone? A, a cell phone? Oh, okay, yes. Uh -huh. well, I think, he, I think he also, phone is not a noun here. In this case, it's phone receiver. Oh, okay, okay, yes. So you oh, don't separate these two. Or, or pressing and call button. Oh, yes. I think then uh, that it's an end of phone conversation. <laughs> Exactly. The right. best replacing phrase is that. Then, a good way to understand phrasal verbs is to replace a phrasal verb with the easy, the, um, its synonym. What's the resulting sentence? After I. After I. After I, how do you pronounce home? Home? Do you remember what we said about letter U? Home? No, I don't. Exactly. You don't? Home? Okay. Home up, I remember. Every time yes. you see a letter U, mm -hmm. 
And where's my soundboard? You should associate, well, most of the times, right? There's always, yes. there's always an exception. an exception. But most of the times, letter U is pronounced with the symbol. Ah. Mm. So you pronounce? Hang, hang up. Hang up. That's right. Oh, oh, sorry, hang up. I remember uh, what I, I, I did wanted to say. Okay, okay, okay. I think you have connection problems because I'm, I'm trying to uh, make an, an exercise here. A good yes. way to, to understand phrasal verbs is to take the portion of the oh. definition ah, that okay. you selected and replacing it into the sentence, the example that you have. Ah, okay, okay. After I ended, ended, uh, after I ended a, four conversa a phone conversation, I remember uh, what I wanted to say. Which phone conversation? If you say a phone conversation, it is any phone conversation. But here we are talking in past, which is a specific yes. phone conversation. Then it sounds weird. So uh, maybe I need to add more de details, like person I was at the time. Mm -hmm. I, no? If you say a phone call, it's any phone call. Yes. What article do you use to speak about a specific phone call? The. So you don't need more information. Oh, okay, after I ended the phone conversation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I remember what I wanted to say. Yes, pronunciation of very, very past. Remember? Remember? Yes. Remember? If, if the verb ends in a voiced sound, uh, I, I didn't remember. I think it sounds like F. F. Wrong. Rolls no? all the time. <laughs> You need to study your rules. <laughs> yes. Could you give me a minute? I need to close the door because it's raining. <laughs> oh, sure, 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 sure. Action. So, does anybody have the? Everybody has the pronunciations about regular verbs. Good. Right. Do you have do you have the screen with you? The, the screen? Yeah, this. this Thank you. Do you have the screenshot? Oh no. no. Yes. <clears throat> Take it. Because these rules are fundamental for good pronunciation. <clears throat> we have a lot of problems with with it. I I I got it. Right? Perfect, perfect. It's ready to learn. Okay. So, verbs. Number one, read the definition. In the dictionary. Um, for, then, in this case, we need to use the first rule, right? Yes. Uh, no. No? Remember, and remember. Remember, and er is voiced. Oh, yes, yeah. remember exactly. Remember, okay, remembered. Now, your D must sound like a D, not like a th, th because you are pronouncing this symbol. Okay, remember, remember, yeah, exactly. It, remember. Sound, it should sound like a duh, 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 duh. remember, you know? okay, yeah, right. So, reading again. Uh, 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 I was. I think that we were in the dictionary, no? It's right here. Oh, yes. Oops, uh, here. After I end, ended the phone conversation, I remembered what I wanted to say. Exactly. That's a good, good pronunciation. Nice, nice job. That's a strategy you should always follow to learn phrasal verbs effectively. 
because a mistake that we do and the reason we are so afraid of phrasal verbs is that we focus on only one verb or only we focus on the Spanish translation and we forget the phrasal verb and all these all these strategies that have helped us in the past they are not going to help us with phrasal verbs the best way is to associate it with the corresponding definition right so the strategy is right here strategy to learn new phrasal verbs number one read the definition in the dictionary and find an easy way to summarize it then number two replace the phrasal verb in the example that you are trying to analyze for better comprehension and help with your memorization of it. Smaller. That's your strategy. We are going to do the same with the other two. Okay. This strategy is going to be our exercise today. So let's now go with the word break down. Who knows what is breakdown? I action basic. What do you know? I think that this when something is not working. Maybe for example you when you are using you know, your laptop and it uh, turns off so suddenly or when you are when you are in a oh, in a car and it 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 doesn't want to to continue working. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's uh, the moment when the car when the car stops working. Yes, breaks I, down, no? I think that is uh, yes. Yes. No, uh, I was thinking in a, a synonym, but no, I, I don't I don't know. Your your explanation was great. The the problem with phrasal verbs is that they don't have a direct one word synonym. Yes, maybe we can explain with a with a phrase. Yes, exactly. That's very, very important. We can explain phrasal verbs with phrases, not with yeah. one word synonyms. Let me take a note on that too. It's also very important. We cannot usually find a one word synonym for a phrase of per. Therefore, you will need to learn them by explaining them with a phrase. So that's what we're going to do with break down. You are correct, Isaac. Break down. Down with all your teacher. Mm -hmm. Of a machine or vehicle to stop working because of a fault. What is a fault? A problem, an error, a mechanical failure. Okay, so here you have this example the telephone system has broken down. Tell me, for example, Jimena. Yes. What portion of the definition is the most relevant part? To stop working? 
to stop working. I agree with you. Adapt this phrase into uh -huh. the example that we have. Okay, the telephone system has no <laughs> has stopped working. Very good. You kept the has. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. The telephone system exactly because this is a structure have past participle. Mm -hmm. Has okay. stopped. Has stopped working. Working. Excellent. Oh. Good job. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Let's try with take off. Okay. Take off has two synonyms, two definitions. Okay. Let's check which one is the first one. That the dictionary gives us. <clears throat> the dictionary gives us number one of an aircraft, etc. <clears throat> to leave the ground and begin to fly. So it is only used for aircrafts. What is an aircraft? An airplane, a helicopter, a jet, etc. I don't have an idea. Okay. Luis, what part of the definition is the most relevant part? To to leave the ground. To leave the ground. And begin to fly. You think? Why why not this one? Okay. I think I think this one is better because to leave the ground is like maybe jump, no, or something like that. Uh, ah, exactly. What if you jump? Uh -huh. Yeah, because I I heard take off many times. I guess in an airplane. I know. I know with the airplane. Oh no, in the no in the airplanes. I I am a beginner. Teacher in English. <laughs> but I, I you, just you read have the, taken, you have gone to airports. Yeah, it was, well, I just uh, watched the monitor. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. This is my way. Listening is very difficult to me. So probably, uh -huh, probably you need to pay attention to, to what people say. Uh -huh, because that's very common. It, it's very, I'm very sure you have heard it sometimes, but you haven't. You haven't detected it yet. Okay. Very probable. But okay. So to replace it. Okay. The the plane lift off. No. The the plane leave the ground an hour late. Exactly, that's what we were saying. Because leave the ground, you can leave the ground by jumping. Okay, okay, okay. You know? Begin. Is it a regular verb? That's a good question. It's irregular. Okay. You don't know the past of again? Not sure. Come on, verbs, people. This is. Intermediate, we need to use begin is, do you remember the patterns? Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Okay, a pattern is, or I detected the pattern when you connect the computer, because the pattern in regular verbs, everybody thinks that there's no organization in irregular verbs. But really there is there is a hack. Detecting the pattern can help you memorize. Some verbs don't change. Other verbs end in T. Other verbs have uh, phonetically E-A-A, uh, you know? 
Okay. The verb begin is in pattern number three. What is the pronunciation? Began. Pronunciation, second syllable. Began. Second syllable. Second, second. In. Be begin. Uh -huh. Okay, the, that's in present, no? Uh -huh. The past. Gun. Exactly. Gun. No began. Gun. Began. Began. I've never seen this um, display or or that like, class. Did yes. you? No. Yes, you have seen it, but it's a different no, organization. I, I swear. I I had you in in, in this. Level. I think I have shown you. I show you it every single class. Yes, but in this in this specific display, that's uh that's new. So you can okay. screenshot it if you like. And also, it is in this in the in the structure handbook that I sent you on PDF. Okay. That's also in there. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Use your material. Open your material. Oops, I'm gonna stick. Mm -hmm. Okay, began. Began the the plane began mm -hmm. to fly. An hour late. Uh -huh. That's correct. The plane began to fly an hour late. This is a Polaris. great example. <laughs> Polaris. <laughs> this is a great example because it's very, I'm very, very sure that a student will use began to fly instead of take off. Why? Because it's more, if you don't find the verb, if you don't find the phrasal verb in your catalog, you will use the most, in quotations, easy way to express the idea. Baby English. Exactly. Which is, not baby, but, you know, basic. Basic. Mm -hmm. Getting into, into intermediate English is understanding that some verbs are more effective for a natural conversation. In this case, take off. Now, take off is the, the definition of the aircraft is not the only uh, definition. We have also look at this one informal speech to leave a place especially in a hurry that's mm. definition number two you have seen that in other contexts no Luis? yes right that's a very common one very very common one and you have this example when he saw me coming he took off in the opposite direction this person didn't want to see you, mm -hmm. right? Let's go. Leonard used to say this to Sheldon. <laughs> I guess. Leonard to Sheldon. Okay, probably, probably. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he saw you and he took off. You know, like bye bye. I don't want to mm -hmm. speak with Sheldon. <laughs> uh huh. That's the one. How would you replace it? Let's go with. Okay, Jesse, are you understanding the the exercise? Yes, teacher. Awesome. What part of the definition is the most relevant information? Leave a place. Leave a place. Yes. Now there is something a little bit more well, well, equally relevant. In leave a place way? how exactly in a hurry but don't forget the connector yes right to leave a place in a hurry especially in a hurry because only to leave is not the same meaning 
it yeah. has some some feeling is lost yeah. how would you replace it in this sentence mm. when he saw me coming Position, he... present C and past when he saw me okay coming. Let's go to the transition. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. The transition is with this symbol. So. 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 Right. All the time. Uh, when he um, when he saw saw me coming, he left. He left. Um, he left. How? In a hurry. Exactly. He left in a hurry. In the opposite opposite direction. Exactly. He left in a hurry in the opposite direction. What a difference is to say he left, and we say, "Well, I phone," you know. Very, very different. That helps you understand phrasal verbs in an easy way. Okay. If you associate it with the real definition. That's why it's so important to have a dictionary with you. So, so important. Every time you have a question, you should open the Oxford Dictionary. Does everybody have the Oxford Dictionary app? I have it. You? Great. Good job. What about the rest? No. Guys, that's I, the I just... best way. Um, but, uh, what? I don't know. Uh, in, in, the, in the Play Store? Yeah. Uh, in a... Both Play Store and Android. Yes, is the Oxford, but you have to pay to 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 have, uh, for example, uh, access. I don't know if it's correct. No, you don't. No, is, for, uh, but for example, for this pronunciation. That was a illegal version. <laughs> that was an illegal version, probably. Eh? <laughs> yes, you were you were checking the the. In English, there is a word for chafa, you know? The word chafa is bootleg. Uh -huh. what, what's the word? That's a word, bootleg. <laughs> Made and sold illegally. A bootleg CD. Bootleg. New vocabulary. Pirate. <laughs> Pirate. <laughs> <laughs> you were you were using the bootleg version. For real, it's, it's so simple. Like everybody, it's Microsoft. Every <laughs> well, not everybody. Nah, who who bought Microsoft? You know, like who bought Windows? That was really so easy. Look, the in in the App Store, there is for Android, no, for Apple. There is the Oxford Dictionary. Let me show I you. I already got it. Yes. Oxford Dictionary. Yes. So, so, so simple. It's like the one that I, that, that is similar to the one that we are using is this one over here. Okay, so you have an oops. iPhone. Unnecessary, brother, eh? <laughs> Super necessary. Look at this. The thing about the Oxford dictionary, I have I have two. Oxford. And this one. The one over here. That's also a really, really good one. 
and this is the one that is similar to the one in, in the glass. You only close this, it's not necessary. This is the one that you say, eh, yes, you, ah, okay, the one that is premium, no? Yes, for the pronunciation, you have to pay. Well, are you on Android? Yes. <laughs> then I can help you check the... The other. No, 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 no. A direct, a direct um, um, link yeah, from, in, from Google Chrome. In the web, right? Exactly. To make it to similar to an app that yes. is not an app. So you are creating, create, yeah. well, you need to create like a direct, direct access? To the... Exactly. Okay, okay, I get it. You can enter Oxford Learner's Dictionary, then do go to the, um, go to the, uh, there is, there's a, I think here, how to make a shortcut, how to make a Chrome shortcut on Android. Instructions in English, because we are learning English. Other website shortcuts to your phone's home screen. That's going to be on your WhatsApp. Okay. Why I'm recommending this? Because I, even even I, that I, that many people could consider that I dominate all English forever and ever. I pull up my dictionary when I am in the movies. You know. I go to the cinema and I take my phone and I check the Oxford Dictionary. Why? Because I don't want one day a student ask me, teacher, what is this? And I don't know. You know what I mean? Yes. So Thank I know you for that. <laughs> we appreciate it. Really, 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 really. It's super, super important that you, whenever you're watching a movie in English, you have the subtitles, you see a strange facial verb, you're like, what? You pull up the phone, quickly check, and that's it. So the dictionary is fundamental for learning new phrasal verbs. Note number three. Those are the three notes of the class. Then, whenever you, whenever you see other phrasal verbs that have a, co a, a similar or use the same verb, for example, let's use hang, break, and take as a reference. What? Check this out. Phrasal verbs using the same verb. Or, yeah, the same verb. In the case we have hang up, break down, and take off, no? But then what is the difference between hang up, hang on, hang out? Hang in, you know, and the like. Hang over. Hang over. Ah, no, hang over is different. That's not a verb. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's not a verb. And on the other side, we have breakdown, no? Okay, what's up with breakdown? Break up. Break over. No, break under. Break for. Break. I don't know another one. In a moment, we'll check. And on the other side, we have take off. 
which is of course take off, but we have also take in, take out, take over, take under, take whatever, which is like before the strategy, it looks scary. But after the strategy, it's like, nah, easy peasy Japanese. I only need to check the dictionary. So let's check. Hang on. Who knows what is hang on? Nobody. Okay, let's read it. Let's go with Luis. Help us. Uh, come on. In, <laughs> informal used to ask somebody to wait for a short time or to stop what they are doing. Hang on, I'm not quite ready. What's the most relevant info in the definition? <laughs> Uh, ask somebody to wait for a short time. Close. The ask is extra. Because ask somebody, the somebody represents a person, no? So it's ask mm -hmm. him, ask her, ask them. This doesn't fit here. Okay. Wait to wait for a short time. Correct. Exactly. The famous, wait a minute, mm -hmm. it's better to hang say, on. hang on. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Then replace it. How would you replace it in the sentence? Hang on teacher, I'm, I don't understand very well. Hang uh -huh. on teacher, I don't understand very well, exactly. <laughs> uh <-huh>, exactly. <laughs> that sounds decent um, in this case wait a minute exactly one minute excuse me a minute is a lot Wait. Exactly. It will be only this. Wait. But no, let's just wait a minute. Uh -huh, because we usually and very often it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. But wait a minute is used for other contexts. Wait a minute is more like, like I analyze something that you said and you check, hmm, wait a minute. You know, in that okay. context, yes, it's wait a minute. But when, when you say, hey, I need to go to the door, it's not wait a minute. Mm -hmm. It's more like, or wait a second, or wait shortly, or wait for me, or wait for a short time, you know? Hang on, let's see this. So eliminate the wait a minute. Whatever. Wait a minute wait. is only when you are analyzing something that you said or something that other person said. Okay. Uh -huh. Wait for a short time. Uh -huh. I'm gonna give you a video about the wait a minute, but let's first pass to Jesse so she can pass attendance. Hello, Jesse. Are you there? Hello. Yes, thank you. Hi. Good night, guys. So I will be attending. Is you uh, Mike? Mike, uh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, Silvana? Yes, yes, I am here. Hi, Silvana. Thank you. Hi, Jesse. Uh, thank you. Isaac? Hello, I'm here. Hi, Isaac. Thank you. Good night. Rafael? Mm -hmm. No? Professor, yeah. Uh, Alex? Alex, also no. Alex? 
Luis, I'm here. Hi, Luis. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Hi. And Jessie? I am here. Thank you, Jessie. And Jimena. Hi. Hi, Jimena. Thank you. Thank you. So, that's all. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice night. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Jessie. Bye. Thank you. Okay, so look at good, a good application of wait a minute. Check this out. Do you know the kazoo kid? You don't know the kazoo kid, right? American no. names. Okay, let's educate ourselves, guys. Check this out. <laughs> Who are you? Wait a minute. Who are you? <laughs> That's a kazoo kid. Why did he say wait a minute? Because he is analyzing who who's the person. No. Uh -huh. He realizes that he doesn't know the person. He realizes he doesn't know the person. Exactly. So then he stops. He's like, wait a minute. You know, this is a good application of wait a minute. Okay, take it as a, as a like two separate uh, expressions. Got it? He's teaching, excellent. Okay, very good. So let's pass to the next part. Let's go now to hang out. That's the one that Luis was saying, right? Yes. And out. Help me, Jesse. Yes. Mm, uh, to spend a lot of time in a place, the local kids hang out at the uh -huh. uh, The local kids. Is Spend a lot of time at the mall. Very good. Let's go. Strategies. Strategies, strategies. Local kids. Spend a lot of time at the mall. Very good. Hang in. Hang in doesn't exist. Phrasal verse with hang. Hang on, hang out, hang up. Let's check hang up. I ah, know that's the one that we saw. Hang about. British English. You are probably gonna hear this in the, actually the word about is very, very commonly used in British English. And this is the one for your exam guys for the first certificate in the listen. So check this out. Help me, Isaac. Yes, I, what do I have to do? The same thing we have been doing the whole class? The, <laughs> yes, yes. To, to extract the, the part that I, can, that I can use. Of course, but just first read, first read the, the definition, definition and uh -huh. Okay, sorry. I, because I can't hear very well, so it's raining really heavy. Oh, okay. Um, hang about to wait or stay near a place, not doing very much. Um, well, I'm not sure about this one because I think that we need a... Um, uh, oh, come on. Uh, I think that um, we need like the two the two parts of this end of this definition no i mean i mean to wait and also doing not very much exactly exactly yeah. that's precisely the thing yes well maybe i can say kids uh, and uh, 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 why um uh, uh, do we need the verb 
uh, be with with him because I think hanging about is with ING now. Hanging about with industries um, as a verb. But what if this is just uh, uh, now? Uh, no, uh -huh, exactly. an activity. If you say, okay, you, I like can an see. Uh -huh, exactly. Uh -huh. Okay, yes, I get it. Kids, well, but I, I think that if I use like wait or stay, I need the way the verb to be, no? Why? I mean, uh, hanging is a verb too. Oh, yes. No, it's, I think that I could say kids staying, uh, staying about, staying, uh, oh, come on, how can I ask the, the second part? <laughs> It's the Your place can be replaced with a with an adverb because adverbs represents the where. So, what kind of word do you think can 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 be can represent a place? A place. Uh, no, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe at? Can I use it? At is not an adverb. That's a preposition. Oh, yes. An adverb mm -hmm. is a, a word that gives you location. For example, where is your computer? Oh, yes, on, in. Again, no, right? these are different oh, prepositions. Uh, <laughs> One more time. Where is your computer? My what? Your computer right now. Uh, the location is uh -huh. at, at home, at my home. At my home, okay. Where? Where is? On my table. Answer it with only one word. My, uh, um, oh. Where is your laptop? Uh, no, no, I don't get it. Like here? Ta -da. The word here oh. is an adverb. Okay. The word here and the, the opposite of here? Uh, uh, there? There. These are adverbs. Okay. You see, add words that give you location. So yes. either you, you can replace this with an adverb, like staying here, staying there, or okay, yes. you have the phrase in the streets. In the streets mm -hmm. is the location that you need. You don't need to say there or here. You have also okay. this. Yes. How would you change it? And uh, maybe kids stay in uh, in the streets. Uh -huh. uh, don't do very much. Don't do very much. Okay, you are close. You are using the words, but you need to check your conjugation. Why are you using don't? Uh, I don't know. I think that no, it's maybe not doing. Exactly, yes. Is that a complete idea? Um, kids uh, staying in the streets, not doing very much. That's correct. Kids staying in the streets, not doing very much. You see the correlation? It was not easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Precisely. Precisely. The, the, we, we need to know what part of the, of the sentence and what portion of the information is replaceable by another. That's the reason it's very important to get familiar with this slide the word families. Where are the word families? This one over here. Because a phrase, if, it's an, if it represents a noun, can be replaced by a noun. If it's an adverb, can be replaced by an adverb. And in this case, if it's a phrasal verb, you need to know what information can be replaced with a phrasal verb. After today, you are not going to forget hanging about. 
Do you agree? Yes or no? Or you forgot already? Yes, yes, I, I think that the phrasal verbs are really useful to, to sounds more natural. Yes, yes, exactly. And we can avoid the challenge if we if we associate it like that. So that's pretty much it, guys. Welcome to intermediate slash advanced English. After after this, all phrasal verbs start growing and growing and expanding your vocabulary in a very native way. So take a note on this. We continue tomorrow with break and take, and we continue with some theory that I want you to, to check because some phrasal verbs are separable and some phrasal verbs need to go together, right? We're gonna check that tomorrow, but this is part one. Okay. Teacher, may, may I take a screenshot to the other? Um, this one, right? Sure. Yes. Merci beaucoup. I, I mean, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> very bad. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, guys. See you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. See you. All right. See you later, guys.